Jesus lifted me. Sneakers and a t-shirt, amen, right way t-shirt or 
a biblical t-shirt. I don't know what God is going to have me wear, but, but I'll get to be casual like I bet you are right now where you are in your home viewing this blessed uh, service on today. And so we're grateful and we look forward to next Sunday, but we don't want to look past this Sunday today. We encourage all of you to give online, amen, uh, rightwaydallas.com is our uh, website. You can give online, amen. You can hear these messages. Watch what I said. You can hear them, you can go audio, or you can go visual, amen. You can see them and, and hear them, see them, amen. Or you can hear them, just listen to them while you drive. We want you to be safe, amen. And so check out rightwaydallas.com, uh, amen. That's our website. But also, if you scroll down on this very Facebook page, you can click Tithely and give online, amen. You can give online on Facebook, amen, on the right way Facebook. But if you don't see it there, then you can rest assured to go to our website, amen, right way. Dallas.com. God bless you. We thank God for you. I want to shout out to Brother Glenn Hawkins. Amen. Our security chief here at the Right Way Church and he leads up our maintenance ministry as well. And he is has been here each and every Sunday. Amen. And even when we began recording on Wednesdays uh, and then we moved it to my home office. Amen. But when we were, any time we've been at Right Way, Brother Glenn Hawkins has been here with us, and he's here on this morning. He greets us as we get here, and we thank God for him. We love him, and thank God for him, amen. And to each and every one of you that have been coming and helping us with the drive up, prayer, and giving, amen. Uh, Deacon Keith has, has come very consistently. Uh, Reverend Mamie Bush Johnson, one of our associate ministers, has been consistent. Reverend Theo Blaylock has been uh, fairly consistent, and then Reverend Michael Sterrett has been from time to time as well, amen, and we're looking forward to seeing him here with us on today. So come on and drive up, 11.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m., drive up on the grounds of the Right Way Church, amen, and you will be greeted at a safe distance, uh, covered mouths, amen, and gloves. You'll have the opportunity to be prayed for, amen, while you stay in your vehicle, amen, and then you'll have the opportunity to give as well. Do all of that without leaving your vehicle and keeping it at a safe social distance, amen, because we're waiting on the Lord, amen. God, we, we follow uh, the Lord, amen, we, we do what he tells us to do, what thus says the Lord, amen, so we thank God on today, we're looking forward to the month of June, amen, I believe the third Sunday in the month of June will be Father's Day, amen, and so whether we're in the church at that time, we're going to see what God does, amen, but we, if we're in church that day, we, we want to see everyone, amen, here, especially all fathers. And we will honor our fathers regardless of being in the service, in the building, or on the outside, amen. Just like we honored mothers as they drove up on mothers, they will do the same for fathers. But we're just going to see what the Lord has in store for us, amen. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, amen, my uh, email uh, is online, amen, it's on the website. You can email me with any prayer requests. You can email me if you want to unite with the Right Way Church, give your life to Christ first and foremost, and or unite with the Right Way Church. You can do that. I am accessible. My phone number is even on the website, amen. So that lets you know that you can call or you can text me. If you don't get me, uh, uh, leave me a voicemail or text me, amen. Let me know who you are and make sure I've got your phone number and contact info, amen. I'm a hands-on pastor, amen, that, that the members of the Right Way Church have full uh, opportunity to get to know me and I get to know them, amen, and we want to be in prayer for you. We want to we uh, be notified if you're sick or loved ones have passed, whatever may be going on, amen, in your life, we want to let you know we are with you, amen. The right way church, amen, the church where God's way 
is the only way, and where bread of heaven is always being served. Amen. We're going to be brief this morning. Amen. I just want to share a brief word with you on this morning, but Sister Natasha had this song on her heart this morning, and she was singing it. Amen. Coming into the church. Amen. So we want to do that before the word on this morning. The song says, Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. How many know that? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Oh, while I'm on this, oh, Lord, pilgrim journey, oh, Lord, I want you, Lord, to walk. Before the word of God 
on today. Father, we come now thanking you for watching over us last night. Lord, we thank you for waking us up with your finger of love on this morning. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be clothed and in our right minds. Lord, we thank you for putting food on our tables and clothes on our backs, Lord. We, Lord, we thank you for just keeping us. Amen. We thank you for protecting our families, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord, for just keeping on making a way for us. And now, Lord, we, we come to hear your word on today. Lord, we come to hear what you want us to hear today through your blessed word. Lord, will you prepare the hearts and minds of your people to hear your word on today. Lord, will you be with me, your humble servant. Your Lord, use me for your glory. Lord, I come realizing that I'm just a vessel ready to be used by you, Lord. Lord, will you speak to me, yet at the same time speak through me. Lord, have thine own way in this house on today, in your house. Lord, we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you again. I just want to share a brief word with you on this morning and thank you again for tuning in with us. Found in the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, one of the major prophets, amen, of the Bible, amen, which means his writing lengthwise, amen, caused him to be considered a major prophet prophet, a minor prophet is simply one that did not write as much lengthwise to their uh, book in the Bible. Amen, amen. So Jeremiah chapter 8, a familiar verse found in that 22nd verse, amen. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse number 20. Two. Amen. To your neighbor, deuce, deuce. Amen. Jeremiah, the 8th chapter, verse number 22. Amen. Giving you time to get that. Amen. The New American Standard Translation of the Bible, Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 22. You're going to see it on the screen here as I read it. If you don't have your Bible, just follow the words that are on the screen as I read read it on this morning. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22. Let us do that right now. Amen. We're ready now. And it says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? These are all question marks. Uh, then it says, why then has not the health of the daughter of my people been restored. Verse 22, let me read it again. It's one verse. It says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has not the health of the daughter of my people been restored? Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his precious and holy word. I want to speak briefly on this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we, we bless the memory of all, amen. Certainly thank God for all of our military, amen, uh, members and those that have given their lives, amen, for that cause and for our safety. We thank God for you and your loved ones on today, amen. But Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22 let me read it one more time. You've seen the scripture. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? 
Why then has not the health of the daughter of my people been restored? I want to label this uh, text briefly today, the wrong diagnosis, the wrong diagnosis, amen, the wrong diagnosis. And so as we look at this text on today, I mean to just talk to you, but I never know what the Lord is going to do. But as we look at this text today, we find that the prophet Jeremiah, he is known as the weeping prophet. Oh, how Jeremiah loved the people of the land of Judah. Amen. And he prophesied to them for so many years, declaring to the people that they are to turn from their wicked ways and serve the true and only God. Amen. Uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God, amen, uh, God, our Father, amen. Jeremiah, you remember Jeremiah. Jeremiah is oftentimes referred to as the prophet. You remember that Jeremiah had gone through so much in his walk, in his uh, prophetic life that he had endured so much abuse and torment at the hands of the enemy and the non-believers that Jeremiah got to the point to where we get in our lives every now and then where Jeremiah said, I'm going to quit. I I I'm done with this. Y'all, I'm just trying to remind you of Jeremiah. He says, I've had enough, enough is enough. I'm fed up. I I'm done. I'm ready to throw in the towel. I I've taken all I can take. I've gone as far as I can go. I've done all I can do. And folks still won't listen and they continue to abuse me. So Jeremiah, one time he says that I'm done with this. But then he goes on to say I can't quit. Amen. Because he said it's like fire shut up in my bones and I, I've got to let it out. I've got to preach and I've got to prophesy for the sake of the Lord. And so this is the same Jeremiah. Jeremiah is dealing with an idolatrous people in the land of Judah. And Jeremiah is constantly trying to help the people understand that idolatry will get you Nowhere. In other words, serving idols. Amen. Now, now we don't deal much uh, with the statues and, and, and all of the bronze and golden uh, figures and all of that. But if we're not careful, we have the tendency to serve material things and idolize material things in our lives. Will anybody be real with me today? Houses, cars, clothes, and and jewelry, and, and, and more important than that, money. Hallelujah. One of the commandments, I believe the first commandment says, there'll be no other, there shall have no other God before me. And so that's what Jeremiah is dealing with in this text. He is trying to communicate to the people that they've got to let go of the idol. Whatever they are putting before the Lord, they got to let it go if they really want healing in that land. Now, have I got a witness here? I'm talking to us on today. I'm talking to our city. I'm talking to our state. I'm talking to our nation. I'm talking to our world, and I'm talking to you on today. As a matter of fact, we find in the text, watch this, y'all, that in this time, there had been idol gods that the people were looking to that supposedly those idols had a balm. B-A-L-M is what the text talks about. But watch this, y'all. I discovered in my research, and you know this as well, they've got Blue Star, they've got... Uh, uh, I can't think of the other, but 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 where uh, where it is called an ointment, 
And that's what the balm is called. Amen. It, it, a balm is an ointment, but when you look up the definition of a balm, watch this, a balm, it is designed to heal and soothe your skin. Have I got a witness here? And, uh, uh, and, and, and I want to let you know, but what Jeremiah is trying to communicate to the people of Judah and what we need to hear on today is that we don't need a balm that heals our skin. We need the type of spiritual healing that goes beneath the skin. Or y'all gonna pray with me today. In other words, our sickness, while we're looking at what this virus that is that is uh, sweeping our land and and, and still uh, has us not doing and living the way we are accustomed to living, which may be a blessing in disguise, and I've said that before and reminded us of that. But what we need is not so much a cure uh, for the healing of our physical body. We need healing of our spiritual body. And that's why God gave me this word today. Isn't that a blessing? That we don't, it's the wrong diagnosis if we think that our sickness is only dealing with the things of our natural health body. Amen. Are y'all going to pray with me today? In other words, y'all, watch this. We need the diagnosis. What a diagnosis is, is it deals with the symptoms that are causing the sickness. Have I got a witness here? That's speaking to us today. But the symptoms that has put our land in trouble, hallelujah, are similar things that uh, put the land of Judah in trouble back in the Bible days, the days of Jeremiah the prophet, who writes this text, amen. For in those days, watch this, the false prophet, prophets who claim to be writing and speaking in the name of the Lord were simply deceiving the kingdom of Judah. Are y'all gonna pray with me? They were men, I'm talking to somebody, I just want you to think in your mind, and I'm not asking you to judge, folks, but let me ask you, does these words sound like anybody that you have uh, experienced or seen uh, in your life, amen, current event, amen. It says that they were men whose personal lives were godless. Are y'all hearing me today? And these men's hearts were covetous. That means greedy. That means wanting to covet, to keep and hold on. Wealth oriented, amen. And, and, and not only were they godless in their personal lives, we see that in folks' personal lives. And not only were their hearts covetous, it's all about them. Do I have a witness here? And whose remedies for the problems of the nation were useless. Do y'all hear what I'm saying on today? It's the wrong diagnosis. Have I got a witness here? You cannot. Believe and listen to the diagnosis of unqualified folk. Have I got a witness here? Folk whose personal lives are godless. Have I got a witness here? Whose hearts are covetous. Have I got a witness here? And whose remedies of the problems, they ain't working. Have I got a witness here? And when we keep it in the ministry mindset, it says that their ministries were popular because they majored on the superficial and, uh, and they marketed whatever good news the people wanted to hear. And that's what Jeremiah chapter 5 and 12, read that in your own time. I also want you to read verses 18 through 22 in your own time to get a good feel for this overall text. But I'm giving you what you need on today. Amen. Jeremiah. Watch this, y'all. He pictured these men as deceitful physicians. Jeremiah 6 and 14 talks about that. In other words, I like the way Jeremiah said that these type of men are just like empty wind. It's blowing, but it ain't accomplishing anything. It's, it's nothing in there. It, it's hollow, amen. It's just a lot of hot air. Somebody ought to hear me today. We got the wrong diagnosis, and not only 
is it like him to win, but it's dispensers uh, of shots. Amen. Ruthless, selfish shepherds. Chapter 23, verses 1 through 4 talks about that in Jeremiah. Amen. And in fact, these, these men are the type of folk that were infecting people and spreading disease. Have I got a witness here? In other words, y'all, if you wonder why things don't seem to get much better, it's because everything that's been thrown out there is only making things worse. Have I got a witness here? You got to watch it. You got to make sure. We've got to make sure that we've got the right diagnosis. Have I got a witness here? I told you I wasn't going to be long today. I'm coming to a fast close. But I just wanted to let y'all know that it's not physical health that we are need to be concerned about. It's our spiritual health. Bible says, it's my people that God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven and I will heal their land. But before the land comes the people. So what are we doing? Are we operating based on a wrong diagnosis? When you come to the dealership to get your car repaired, they have to put the car, whatever problem you may have, and people don't really like the pay for it, you know how we are, uh, but they have to charge you so that they can hook the car up to a computer. And that computer actually generates the issue that's taking place within that vehicle. And that's how the correct diagnosis is determined so that we're not throwing parts and wrenches and guessing at what we think ought to fix it. How many know that? I bet y'all got some witnesses today that you've spent a whole lot of money, amen, a whole lot of time trying to fix stuff yourself. Hallelujah. Here, Thank you, Holy Ghost. And when you, after you spent all you could and you had no more, almost like the woman with the issue of blood, in other words, you had spent all, she spent all she had, and instead of getting better, she got worse, but then she met Jesus. And that's the key, y'all. We've got to have the right diagnosis, and when you've got the right diagnosis, then you can uh, be introduced to the right prognosis. A prognosis is the, uh, is, it is simply diagnosing the, or foretelling or prophesying what the disease will end up doing. And how many know we serve a Savior that has the prognosis? Amen. In other words, if we give it to him, he can handle it, he can fix it, but we've got to give it to him. As I close, let me share a brief story with you on today. There's a little boy that took his girlfriend to the fair. And when he got there, they were walking through the fair and they got to the section of the fair where all of the games were played and you could win the big stuffed animals and all of that. And so he was walking with his girlfriend and he looked and saw the big bear and he looked at her and said, I'm going to win you one of those big teddy bears. And of course she was delighted at that news that he was going to get her a big teddy bear. And so finally they walked up on a game that consisted of a few dolls on a pedestal. And you would take a baseball and throw that baseball at the dolls. And if you could knock those dolls down, then you win the game and get the big teddy bear. The little boy looked at his girlfriend and said, now this is the game for us right here. He says, I'm a little league baseball pitcher and I know how to throw the ball. I believe that I can win this game and get you that bear. So sure enough, the man commentator is standing there. Come on up, young man. Step right up. Uh, you get three balls for a certain amount of money. And if you knock just the three dolls down with one of these balls, you get three tries. Surely you can do this. You look like a good uh, baseball player. Why don't you come step right up and give it a try? So the little boy gave the, little, the man his money. 
And the man gave him three baseballs. The little boy picks up one of the baseballs and he throws it. Wow. And he knocks those three dolls down. But within a couple of seconds, the dolls begin to raise back up. Little boy shook his head, stretched it a little bit, took the second ball, reared back, and gave it a little more power this time. He lunges and throws that ball, and sure enough, he knocked all three of the dolls down this time. And it looked like they stayed down a little bit longer, but they rose right on back up. Oh, Are y'all hearing me today? Third ball and the last and final try. The little boy says, I'm going to give it all I got this time. He asks his girlfriend to give him a little room. He takes that last baseball, kicks his leg up and throws it with all of his young mind. And he knocks those dolls completely down. But sure enough, it took a little longer, but not, not much. And those dolls rose back up. Listen, about that time, an old man was walking by and observed uh, the little boy throwing the ball at the baseball game. And, and then the uh, uh, the little boy looked at him and, and the man said, son, why don't you quit wasting your money on that game? You know you can't win that. And the little boy said, well, I don't even know. The, the old man said, you ought to just take your little girlfriend and go buy some ice cream and enjoy the rest of the fair. The little boy said, well, I don't understand it, mister. Can I ask you a question? And the man said, go ahead, son. The little boy said, sir, Every time I throw the ball, every time that I knock those dolls down, they raise back up. Have I got a witness here about that time? The man looked at the little boy. The little boy said, sir, can you answer my question? Why is it that every time I knock the dolls down, they get back up? Oh, Lord. The old man looked at the boy. He said, I don't know what to tell you, young man. He said, all I can figure out is whoever, whatever. Diagnosis. 